So in our next video, we're going to take a look at some more advanced features that Onshape allows us to do. In particular, we're going to look at a loft. We're going to look at a sweep. We're going to look at shelling. And we're going to look at ribbing. Let's go ahead and get started. So I'm going to create a document and I'm just going to call it advanced features. So I think I'll start with sketch, but I'll start with the top plane. And I will go ahead and press in for normal. Now on the rectangle, I will use a center point rectangle. So I could press the R key. I'm going to draw a square and I'm going to simply make it four inches by four inches. So a four inch square. Go ahead and click the green check mark. And this time I'm going to use a plane. Now there are several different ways to use a plane. And most of the time it's just an offset plane. However, if we click that down arrow, there are all kinds of other options for us. Tangent is one that I use frequently, mid-plane, and so is line angle. They both can be quite helpful. All of these have their purposes. For now, though, offset is fine. We'll click the rectangle we just drew, and we're going to move this plane up two inches, so we can actually specify that. I'm going to click Sketch now, and click that plane, and press in to normalize it. I'll go ahead and check that circle and I'm going to draw just a three inch circle and click the green check mark. So what we're looking at here, we've got us two different shapes and two different planes. So we're going to go up to use the loft command. What the loft allows us to do is create parts that intersect that are in two different planes. So I'll click loft and I'm going to click the square and the circle. It really shouldn't matter what order you click those in. So I'll go ahead and click that green check mark. Okay, so I've got this piece here. What I want to do is go ahead and shell this. So here is the shell command. We've used it before in other activities, but I'll click shell and I'm going to just make the shell thickness. The default is 0.1. I'm going to say 0.125. So an eighth of an inch. What I'll do next is actually create some ribs. So I'm going to push these ribs down in there just a little bit. So I'm going to take another plane. I'm going to grab this plane right here, which is currently the top. And I'm going to scoot this thing down for offset distance. Let me just put in 0.5, so like a half inch. And I'll click the green check mark. Now I'll choose sketch and the plane I just drew, which is going to be plane two. I'll click on that and click in or press in for normal. I'm going to use the line tool, but a little bit different this time. I'm going to choose midpoint line. So that's a little different than what we're used to. What that allows us to do, though, is create a line based on a point and go in both directions. I think I'll just make the distance on this too. This is really not super important, the distance on this. The more important thing is that we have the two lines. These are going to effectively be construction lines. So I'll click the green check mark. Now I'm going to use rib. So there's rib. I'm going to click both of the lines I just drew. And then I'm going to change instead of parallel to sketch plane, I'll click that and I'm going to say normal to sketch plane. And you see how it already drew those. That's neat. But check this out. If we click extend profiles to part, it takes it all the way to the edge, which that's what we're after in this case. So I'll click the green check mark. Now, I don't know about you, but some things are getting a little confusing for me. So I'm going to get rid of everything but the front plane here. So here's how to do that. I come over here and there's an eyeball by each one. So I click the eyeball. There goes the top plane. Here goes the right plane. We also have plane one that we put in and we have plane two that we put in. That's a whole lot less confusing. I probably could have done that earlier, huh? So now I'm going to click Sketch. I'm going to click that front plane. And I'll press in. I'm going to drag it down there. Remember, you can hold that wheel down on your mouse. What I want to do is create a path for this to sweep. So I'm going to grab my line tool this time. So just the regular line tool is going to get it for us. I'm going to zoom in and I want to come right off the top of this. The problem is it's not letting me use that line. It acts like it wants to, but it won't. And if I zoom in here, that's not really on the line. 
let's check this out, how to actually handle this. I'm going to use the use command or the project. So I'll use it. Click that line. Now it's actually usable. I'll grab the line tool. I'm going to find the midpoint. I'm just going to come straight up. I think I'll just make this line be two inches. I'm going to zoom out a little bit. Now I'm going to make use of the arc command. So right over here, three point arc, or I can press A, either one. I'm going to start at the end point and just kind of draw straight out, bend this line up. What I ultimately want for the radius is two. So as soon as I click off, it'll let me place that. I want that to be tangent. So remember from previous lessons, there's a tangent constraint. Click the arc and the line. Now they're tangent. And then I want to do another arc coming off the end point here. I just drag it down. Again, this arc or this radius is also going to be two. And I want to use that tangent constraint one more time. So here and here. Something going just like that. Okay, so we can click the green check mark. I want to rotate it in such a way that I can see the top of our loft as well as the path we just created. So here's sweep right up here. So now what I'm going to do is click sweep in. I'm going to click the face I want to sweep. So this is kind of our uh, the face of the loft, if you will. And then it says sweep path. So I'm going to have to come over and click. And then I'll choose these lines that I drew. So the lines and the arcs. And I'll click the green check mark. Now to clean this up, I can say, you know what? Let's turn the front plane off as well. And for that matter, let's turn the origin off. So now I just have the piece that we created. 